two are gradually approaching each other, in any case. The lay reader, for whom? Copyright Copyright 1998 Rules of Trust. 82. A Treatise on the Seven Rays. Volume 4. Esoteric Healing. These teachings are intended, will get a clearer comprehension of my thesis if it is kept relatively free from the technical terms and the academic attitudes of the medical sciences. They would but serve to confuse, and my effort is to give a general picture of the underlying causes of outer physical ills. I seek to present certain aspects of occult therapy for which mankind is now ready, reminding me that the presentation is naturally inadequate and partial, and for that reason may appear incorrect and to be challenging to those who look ever for outlets for human credulity. That, however, concerns me not. Time will prove the accuracy of my statement. The new medicine will deal with factors which are dimly recognized as present and which are not, as yet, brought into any real or factual relationship to man and his body. The basic theory upon which the new medical teaching will rest can best be summed up in the statement that there is in reality nothing but energy to be considered, and the forces which are resistant to or assimilative of higher or different types of energy. Let me therefore start by giving you a new law to add to the four already communicated. The previous laws have been in the nature of abstract propositions, and unless related to this fifth law will remain somewhat vague and meaningless. Law D. There is not but energy, for God is life. Two energies need in man, but other five are present. For each is to be found a central point of contact. The conflict of these energies with forces and of the forces which themselves produce the bodily ills of man. The conflict of the first and second persists for ages until the mountain top is reached, the first great mountain top. The fight between the forces produces all disease, all ills and bodily pain, which seek relief in death. The two, the five, and thus the seven, plus that which they produce, possess the secret. This is the fifth law of healing within the world of form. This law can be resolved into certain basic statements which can be tabulated as follows. 1. We live in a world of energies and are a constituent part of them ourselves. 2. The physical vehicle is a fusion of two energies and seven forces. 3. The first energy is that of the soul, the ray energy. It is the producer of conflict as the soul energy seeks to control the forces. 4. The second energy is that of the threefold personality, the personality ray as it is resistant to the higher energy. 5. The forces of the other energies are ray potencies which control the seven centers and are dominated either by the energy of the personality or by that of the soul. 6. Two conflicts, therefore, proceed between the two major energies and between the other energies, focused through the seven centers. Copyright Copyright 1998 Rules of Trust 83. A Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4, Esoteric Healing. 7. It is the interplay of these energies which produces good health or bad. There has been much teaching given in the age-long struggle between personality and soul, but it has always been presented in the language of spiritual approach of mysticism and of religion, or else in terms of character reaction, of abstract aspiration and of purity or non-purity. With these I shall not deal. 
Mycene is the effects of this conflict in the physical body. I wish, therefore, to confine myself only to the physiological and psychological problems incident to the struggle which, in the main, make hard the lot of the disciple. It might be posited that a. All diseases and physical difficulties are caused by one or more of three things or conditions. 1. A developed soul contact, thus producing the vitalization of all the centers in ordered rhythm, according to the soul ray. This necessarily produces stress and strain in the physical vehicle. 2. Personality life and focus, which attempts to negate this soul control, and which is largely expressed through the activity of the growth center predisposing an activity of the thyroid gland and of the centers below the diaphragm. 3. A cycle in the life of the aspirant wherein personality control begins to weaken and in which the emphasis and consequent activity shifts into the centers above the diaphragm, again causing trouble and readjustment. P. Certain objectives present themselves to the aspirant at various stages, and each involves progress, but at the same time certain attendant difficulties. 1. The objective before the initiate is to have every center in the etheric body responsive to the ray energy of the soul and with all the other seven ray energies subsidiary to it. This process of stimulation, of readjustment, and the attainment of established control goes on until after the third initiation. Then, when that initiation has been taken, the physical vehicle is of a totally different caliber and quality, and the rules and laws of health no longer apply. 2. The objective before the disciple is to promote control of the centers in the body, via the soul, through stimulation, elimination and eventual stabilization. This inevitably produces difficulty, and the vitalization or inspiration either of these words will be appropriate, or their lack or deficiency, affect the bodily organs within the areas around the centers and affect all substances surrounding the centers. 3. The objective before the aspirant or the probationary disciple is to transfer the forces from the centers below the diaphragm, via the solar plexus center, to the centers above the diaphragm. The energy of the base of the spine has to be transferred to the head, the energy of the sacral. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 84 a Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4, Esoteric Healing. Center must be lifted to the throat, whilst the energy of the solar plexus must be transferred to the heart. This is done in response to the magnetic, pull of the soul ray as it begins to dominate the personality ray. It is a long and painful process, covering many lives and carrying, as a result, many physical ills. 4. The objective before the average man unconsciously affected is to respond fully to personality force, focused primarily at the middle point, the solar plexus, and then steadily and intelligently to coordinate these forces so that an integrated personality is presented eventually to the soul for control and use. 5. The objective before the primitive or undeveloped man, again unconsciously effective, is to live a full animal and emotional life, thereby gaining experience of growth, of contact, and eventually of understanding. By this means the response apparatus of the soul in the three worlds is built. 
I would also call attention to the thought which I have here interjected, that the objectives intrinsically in themselves have an effect upon that towards which man is striving. This is a thought warranting careful consideration. These generalizations will be useful only if you remember that they are generalizations. No aspirant at any stage is perfectly clear-cut in his endeavor until after the third initiation, nor is he entirely particularized in his life and effort. Men are at all imaginable stages of development, and many of these stages are intermediate to the five stages above mentioned. These all merge and blend into each other, and often constitute a formidable and confusing arena for thought and activity. It is only in the life of the undeveloped individual that clear simplicity is to be found. In between, from the stage of infancy of the race or of the man to that of the state of liberation from personality life, there is nothing but complexity, the overlapping of states of consciousness, difficulty, disease, psychological problems, illness and death. This must obviously be so when the vast number of energies and forces which constitute man's being and form his environment are brought into relation with each other. Every human being is, in reality, like a miniature whirlpool in that great ocean of being in which he lives and moves, ceaselessly in motion until such time as the soul, breathes upon the waters, her forces, and the angel of the presence descends into the whirlpool. Then all becomes still. The waters stirred by the rhythm of life, and later stirred violently by the descent of the angel, respond to the angel's healing power and are changed, into a quiet pool into which the little ones can enter and find the healing which they need. So says the old commentary. The centers in the glandular system. Copyright, copyright 1998 Lucas Trust. 85. A Treatise on the Seven Rays. Volume 4. Esoteric Healing. It will therefore be apparent to you that disease when not of a group origin, for the result of planetary karma or based on accidents takes its rise in the activity or the non-activity of the centers. This is a statement of a basic truth, given in the simplest manner. The centers, as you know, govern the endocrine system which, in its turn, controls the seven major areas of the physical body and is responsible for the correct functioning of the entire organism, producing both physiological and psychological effects. The importance of this glandular system cannot be overestimated. It is a replica and miniature of the septenary constitution of the universe and the medium of expression and the instrument of contact for the seven ray forces, the seven spirits before the throne of God. Around this at present unrecognized truth the medicine and the healing methods of the future civilization will be built. The glands constitute a great relating system in the body, they bring all parts of the physical vehicle into relation with each other, they also relate the man to the etheric body, both individual and planetary, and likewise to the bloodstream, the carrier of the life principle to all parts of the body. There are consequently four major agents of distribution to be found in the physical body. They are all complete in themselves, all contributory to both the functional and the organic life of the body, all closely interrelated and all producing both physiological and psychological results according to their potency, the response of the centers to the higher inflow, the point in evolution achieved, and the free expression, or the reverse, of the incoming energy. These four agents 
the distribution of energy are 1. The etheric vehicle itself. This with its myriads of lines of source and